Hey everybody, um, we're back and today we're going to talk about disjunction introduction and disjunction elimination. So before we get into the actual rule, let's talk a little bit about what the disjunction really means. So if you remember, our disjunction is the wedge. And what does the wedge tell us? Well, it means or. So it'll have to, one thing on each side of it, maybe R or T. And what that tells us, if we see the expression R or T, is that either R is true or T is true. But it doesn't tell us which one. So there's kind of a mystery associated with the or symbol with disjunction. We know that one of them is true, at least one of them is true. But we don't know which one it is. R is true or T is true. R or T. Things you could say are, in my lunch there is an apple or there is an orange every day. So some days maybe it's an apple, some days maybe it's an orange. But the whole statement is true because it has that possibility for it either to be apples or oranges. So that one would be in my lunch today, there is an apple, a, or an orange. So let's take a look at the first of these rules, which is disjunction introduction. All right, here is our disjunction introduction rule. And what it tells us is that, say we have P on a line by itself. What we can do is, if we know P is true, then any disjunction statement with P in it is also going to be true. So if P by itself is true, we can say the statement P or Q. And that whole statement would be true because at least one piece of it, the P, is true. So that's what disjunction introduction rule lets us do. If we have just one expression by itself, we can put an OR symbol after it, a disjunction, and then anything else we want. So maybe we wanted the P to turn into P or S. All we have to do is put the OR next to it, put in the S that we want, because the whole statement is true given that P is already true, and then we put the line where we got the original piece of it, the P, we got that on line one, and we put an OR symbol and an I for introduction. So that is how you do disjunction introduction. All you do is add the piece that you want to the disjunction, say where you got the original part of the disjunction, and then write disjunction introduction. So another thing to notice is that maybe you didn't want P or S, you wanted to say S or P. Well that is just fine. It still holds true that if P by itself is true, then the whole statement S or P, that whole expression, is also true. So you can put the extra piece either in front or behind the original one. And then just cite the line where you got the original piece of information. Okay, so now that we've seen disjunction introduction, let's take a look at disjunction elimination. And that one's going to be a little bit more complicated, but it works off the same idea of what the disjunction statement means, that at least one of the pieces is true. All right, here is the disjunction elimination rule. And what that tells us is that, say on a line we have a disjunction. In this case, P or Q. And we want to get a piece of information out of it. Now, the disjunction itself is kind of hard to get information out of it because we know one of the pieces is true, but we don't know which one. So what we can do is we can experiment with each piece to see if we can get information out of it. And we do that by making our own assumptions. So maybe that was an assumption at the beginning. And then so we make ourselves a separate scope line and we experiment with the first piece. And say the first piece allows us to arrive at the information R. There would be other steps in there, but the general idea is that we try the first piece and it leads us to the information R. 
and then we try the second piece of it. And if we can get the same piece of information derived from the second part of the disjunction as we can from the first, then we can conclude that that piece of information, R, is true. And the idea is that we, we're not sure which one of those is true. So we take a look at each one. We say, well, what if P were true? What if the first piece were the one that was true? And P gets us to R. And we say, okay, well, if P is true, then R is true. Then we say, well, we're not sure about P. So we go on and we look at Q. And we say, oh, well, if Q is true, then R is still true. So it doesn't really matter which one of those is true, the P or the Q, they both lead us to the same destination. So it doesn't matter which one of them works. All right, so that was the disjunction introduction rule and the disjunction elimination rule. The first one lets you add a piece by using a disjunction. And the second one helps you get around the disjunction, kind of around it, to get to a piece of information.